What's up everyone, Almighty Zentaco here. Today, we are gonna be doing a tutorial on a randomly generated pool, or a random pool. So, what a random pool is, it's a limited collection of things, uh, such as objects, numbers, or strings, whose contents can be randomly pulled out and used, thereby being removed from the pool, so they cannot be randomly selected again. You can think of it like a bucket holding a bunch of objects. When you reach into the bucket and remove an object, it's obviously no longer there in the bucket, so you can't pull it out again. So this is very helpful in making card games, non-repeating loot drops, or random but unique dialogue options. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at what I have so far. If you think this looks interesting, then go ahead and follow along, and we will try to replicate this as close as possible. Here we go. So what I have is a hat. You click on the hat, and it'll randomly pull out of the hat one of five objects and it'll, every time you click on the hat it pulls out another object until there are no more objects inside the hat. Alright so uh, when we click on the hat an object comes out and we also get some dialogue here. You have pulled a skull out of the hat. You have pulled a unblinking eyeball out of the hat. You have pulled a dismembered thumb out of the hat. You have pulled a retarded taco out of the hat and you have pulled a bat out of the hat. Now if we press R, it'll restart and we can do it again and as you see, the order is different because the objects are random, um, but you know, it only will pull them out until there's nothing left. So that is the use of a random pool. Like I said, it allows you to put objects randomly into a pool, pull them out, and uh, you can only pull out what's in there once. You could obviously have multiples in there, but it does allow you to create like an inventory system and uh, you get to decide what is in that random pool. So let's go ahead and figure out how this is done. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and create a new frame, and that is where we're going to make this. To make this random pool, we're going to use an object called the list object, so go ahead and insert that now. Right click, insert object, and from the list, select list. Alright, so here's the list object. Now it has some options here on the left, as you can see. Um, see where it says one based index? We want to uncheck that because we want zero-based index. For most programmers, zero-based is preferred. One-based, I don't know why you'd want to do that. Most things start with zero, like random generation and stuff. Usually starts with a zero, so I recommend using a zero-based index. Um, we can also hide it on start, but we're not going to do that. All right, so to put things into this pool, we are going to put them into the list. And to do that, we're just going to double-click on it, and that'll bring up this prompt. And then we can put stuff in there. So you can put whatever you want. You can put like an old lady, a cat, a fire hose, an explosive, an explosive wombat. So if we press OK, now we have our list. So we'll run it and take a look. And this is our list. There you go. So we can do all kinds of stuff with this list. We can add things to it. We can find out what is currently selected. We can select things dynamically through code. We can delete things off of the list. And that's the important part. We can delete things off of this list. So what we're gonna do is put our objects in here by name. Uh, it's just gonna be a list of strings. And then we're going to pull things out randomly and we're going to delete the current selection. So let's go ahead and put our objects in here. So we had a bat. I'm not going to capitalize it. We had a bat, uh, an, un an unblinking eyeball, a retarded taco, a dismembered, is that right? Dismembered, I can't spell, dismembered thumb, uh, and the last thing was a skull. Press OK when you have everything you need in that list. Now, go on over to the values part, uh, the values tab of our list. We're going to need an alterable value. We're going to call this cur underscore item. And this is going to be where we store the currently selected item that we're trying to pull out of the hat. Uh, and what we're going to do is simply, when we click on the hat, so, uh, make a, uh, <clears throat> when we click on the hat, we're going to generate a random number, um, which is going to be equal to the length of the list so if there it's gonna be like if there's five in the list like we have now it'll be random five that will give us a number and then we will then take that selection and using that number we will create the object in the frame and then we will delete this selection so that's how we're going to do it we're also going to need a string object so insert that now and I'm going to change the properties of the string. 
I'm going to pick a new font and make it bigger. Now, if your font is too big, if it's bigger than the box, you do need to resize the box because the string will only display where the box is at. All right, so we've got our string in here and we got our list. So first thing we're gonna do, I'm going to insert a comment and we're going to null string at start. I'm doing that so that when the frame starts, the string doesn't say text. So we will say start a frame and then go to the string and select change alterable string and just make it null like that. Now I'm gonna show you basically how uh, to update the string to correspond to what is currently selected on the list. So this is something we're just gonna do for a test. We're going to actually do this a little differently as we move forward, but here we go. Um, show selection. And what we're gonna do is simply go to the string. This needs to be always, and then go to the string and we're going to set the or change the alterable string and we're going to go down to the list and we're going to select get current line. So get current line will grab the string that's on the current line and that allows us to display it. Let's run it. So if I click on bat, it says bat. Unblinking eyeball is unblinking eyeball. Retarded taco is retarded taco. Dismember thumb and skull. All right, so I'm gonna do this two ways. Um, first, I'm going to delete this because that's not what we're gonna do. Um, first, I'm going to make it so that when we press space, it's going to randomly generate and it's, gonna, it's going to randomly generate, show the string for the object that's been pulled out and then remove it. And it's not, we're not gonna use the hat or any of the art. So if you wanna see how that's done, keep watching. But if you just wanna know how a basic random pull is done, we're gonna do it very quickly. So. That'll allow you to decide how long you wanna watch this video. All right, so we will say uh, generate random number on key press. So we're gonna go to the keyboard upon pressing a key and that's gonna be space. What we're gonna do is go to the list object and change an alterable value. We're gonna set the value of current item to random. We need a parenthesis and go back to the list object and select get number of lines. Now these these are both um, zero index, so it's fine. Both the random and this list is uh, a zero based index, so this will line up perfectly. So um, we, we have set the current item to this random list. Uh, all right, all right. And then after we do that, we want to display it. So go to change alterable string, and we're gonna change that to, from the list, we're going to get current line Um, the order changed here, so make sure that we are drag this on top because we want to set the current item uh, randomly before we change the alterable string. Anyway, lastly, what we want to do is go back to the list and we want to delete a line. And that line is going to be the current line, so go to list and uh, get the value of current item, which is the random number we generated. And there we go. Now make sure we delete last because things are out of order, like I said. So let's go ahead and check it out. So we press space. We need to do one more thing here. Go ahead and insert again. Uh, go to the list and you want to go to set current line. And we're gonna set the current line to the, gener the random number we generated. So go back to list, select values and select the current item. All right, let's make sure the order is right. So we are uh, randomizing a number based on how many entries are on the list. We are setting the current line to that number. We are setting the string to show what has been selected and then we're deleting the line. Okay, let's test it out. We pulled out the bat, dismember thumb, retarded taco, skull, unblinking eye. And now there's nothing. So it press space again and nothing shows up because the list as you see is now empty. So if that's all you need to know is the bare bones of how to do this, that is it. You have now created a random pool and you can apply this any way you want. Fill it with whatever you feel like, cards, whatever, items, and you can yank them out. But I'm gonna show you for the sake of it uh, how I made it uh, correl correlate to the items on the screen and all that with, with the uh, hat. So let's keep going.
I'm actually going to delete this for that. We're going to redo that. Okay, so first I'm going to insert a backdrop. Okay, I don't want to see this uh, list here, so I'm actually going to hide it. So click hide on start. All right, now we need an object. So insert an active object, and this is going to be our hat. We're going to rename this hat, and I'm simply going to import some art of a hat. Now, this is really huge, so I need to rescale that. That's obnoxious. Scale that down. Boom. There we go. Now, to do this, uh, I'm going to actually want to use a flag. So create a flag, call it on, boom. All right. Perfect. Now we need to insert another object. This is going to be um, our first item. And I, I don't need to name it yet. Let's go ahead and give this a qualifier. Um, so go to qualifiers. And we're going to add whatever. It doesn't matter. Pick one. I'm going to say good. That works for me. So that has the qualifier good. We're now going to give this some art. <clears throat> Uh, we're going to start with the thumb. Boom. Resizing the thumb down. And there we go. We got a thumb. Um, we need a string on this and call the string name. So what we're going to do, I don't think you can reference the name of an object, unfortunately. Um, see, because if you look on the tab here, it's currently named active. But I'm going to name it dismembered thumb so that the name matches up with what's in the list. All right, that's important. Now, unfortunately, you can't just reference this in Fusion as far as I know, but you can grab it and stick it into a string and then reference that string. Okay, so what we're, we're going to do that. At start, we're going to grab the name of all the objects that are in this group here of good, and we're going to plug that name into the string name. All right, so go ahead and clone this object because we want to we want to keep the grouping and everything. But this is not thumb two. This is going to be bat. And I'm going to need to give it some art. So here's the bat. So I'm importing this. I need to make my Inkscape art a little smaller. This is obnoxiously huge. I didn't realize this was so big when I made it. Since Inkscape is vector art, it just looks the same no matter how big it is. All right. There we go. And let's clone the bat. This one's going to be the eyeball. Name it uh, unseeing, wait, unblinking eyeball. The name needs to match up to whatever was in the list. So make sure whatever you have in the list matches up. Clone again. Here's our skull, so name that skull. Dang, it's huge. Resize, make it smaller. And last, we want the retarded taco. Import retarded taco. That is some amazing art, I must say. It's amazing. All right, res resize this retarded taco. Boom, boom, boom. Um, there we go. And make sure his name is Retarded Taco. Okay. Select all of these, hold in shift, and you can click on each one to select multiples. And we're going to go here to the display options. Uncheck visible at start. We don't want to see them right away until we pull them out of the hat. Okay. So we're nulling the string at start. Let's add another comment, just so this makes sense to us. And we're going to store object name in var name. So that means we're going to store the object name, the name of the object, into the, the variable called name. All right. So what we want to do that uh, to do that, we're going to go to the group of objects good. And well, actually, sorry, we're going to say start a frame, <clears throat> go to the group of objects, good, alterable string, set, name, and then go back to the group of good and select name. So what that's going to do is grab the name of the object that's currently scoped, which will be itself, and plug its own name into the string name so that we can reference it later. 
it would be easy if you could just reference names. Maybe you can, I don't know how. So there you go, that's the way I'm doing it. Okay, click on hat, pull things out. Okay. So we will say, go to the mouse, user clicks on an object, we'll just say single click and that's gonna be the hat. When this happens, I'm going to go to the hat and set on the flag on. Then I'm gonna find out if the flag on is on. And if it is on, that means we've clicked on it. So first I wanna do, like just like we did before, we're gonna go and set the alterable value of current item to random. And we're gonna to go to the list and grab the number of lines. That's the first thing we want to do. Then we want to set the current item. So go to set current line, and that's going to be the value we just generated. So go to values and its current item. These got put out of order, unfortunately. So make sure your make sure that your order of operations are always the way you want them. They switch around when you insert them on Fusion. That's that kind of bugs me. Anyway, uh, so set the current. So we randomize a number. Set the current line. Now we're gonna set up the string. So go to the string, and change it. Now we're gonna have it say something, such as you have pulled. Put a space. Plus. So this is what you've pulled. We pulled the object. Um, so go to the list, and get line that's the line we're up oh, sorry go to the list and get the current line plus because we have more to say on the string we need a space after that quotation you have pulled whatever it is out of the hat exclamation mark order got messed up again set the current line change the string Okay, now we want to actually update the art so that if the current object uh, matches the name, it becomes visible. So we'll do that this way. All right, so go to the group good, algebra value, and compare one of the algebra strings, and that is the string name. We want to see if it's equal to the value under list of the current line. So. If the, currently, if the current selected line is the same as the name of our object, which will be true if you've made sure that you named uh, the names match what is in the list, then we're going to want to make that object visible. So go to the group good, go to visibility, um, make object reappear. Now we want to find out again if the hat flag is on. Is it on? Okay, so if, if on is on, that means this whole thing is still happening. This is the, the stuff that you want to transpire whenever we click. So we have clicked. This is all going, going to happen linearly. So it's still on. <clears throat> so what we want to do now is delete the current selection. So simply go to delete a line. And that was the value of current item that was stored here in this uh, list object. Boom, it's now deleted. They all got pulled out, and that's because we didn't turn them off. So uh, last thing we wanna do here is go to the hat, flag, set off, flag on. That'll end our click script. So it's now sufficient, self-sufficient. It does what we want it to do, but it doesn't go on forever. Let's try it. I need to move this because it's the text is uh, overlapping. All right, let's test it and see if it works. Click on the hat. You have pulled a retarded taco out of the hat. You have pulled a bat out of the hat. You have pulled a skull, an eye, unblinking eyeball, and dismembered thumb. Now, if you click again, it says you have pulled out nothing. So we kind of want to fix that. We don't want that to happen. So we, we, we want to make sure that we only do this stuff if there is still things left in the hat to pull out. So we will compare two general values and we're gonna find out if this value is greater than zero and the value is going to be under the list, we're going to get number of lines. 
So, and make sure with the this is here first. So, um, essentially, we're finding out if the if the flag is on. So we have clicked on the hat, uh, and there's still something in in the hat to pull out. If that's the case, we'll go through all the stuff that we outlined earlier. Let's check it and see. And let's click one more time. It doesn't do anything else. So it is now complete. We have uh, pulled everything there is out of the hat. All right, everyone, I want to thank you for watching this video. And uh, until next time, have a fantastic day. Thank you.